Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about felling, which is securing the seams on the back side so that the fabric doesn't unravel. Uh, there are a couple ways to do this. I'm going to start with the most popular way that's done most often. And then there have been a couple of pictures that I put up of this like little cross hatched. Um, it's more decorative on the right side or the outside of the garment. And I'm going to be uh, talking about that too. It's just a little bit of a different technique, but it does essentially the same thing. There are a few steps to doing the felling of the seams. Uh, this is the wonderful bumblebee fabric that I found that I was going off about. And this is this giant monstrosity of a chunk of fabric is the skirt. Um, all of the seams except for the very back seam have been stitched together and it's just a back stitch. Let me pull it up closer here. It's just a focus. There we go. It's a standard back stitch that I did in a variegated thread because I love variegated threads. You can tell the difference. This is the back side of the stitch. It's a little bit thicker. And the first thing that you need to do when filling a seam is to cut down close to the seam allowance. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually open up that seam like so. And I want to cut close to the back side of the stitches. It doesn't really matter. It's a little bit neater if you cut close to the back side of the stitches and then fold over this way just because that side looks a little bit neater than this side. But you can go either way, um, especially if the seams are done by machine, which this isn't really a channel about using a machine. So, but I'm just going to snip that down and cut close to where those stitches are. You can see how close I'm cutting. If the camera would focus, focus. Here we go. You can see how close I'm cutting. It's pretty close. And then I'm going to do that all the way down. And we want it that close so that we can fold that fabric edge over. And then fold it again so it's encased in the middle of what's essentially two pieces of folded over fabric so that it looks like the bottom of a hem from when we were doing hemming. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to do this all the way down this seam. Yay. And while I'm cutting, if I can get my, there we go. I am going to go ahead and do a shameless plug because I had some issues come up with technology in that the laptop that I normally use to do everything uh, decided that it didn't want to connect to the internet anymore. So I had the rather unexpected expense of purchasing a brand new laptop. Anybody who's done any computer shopping recently knows they are not the least expensive things in the universe. So if you don't mind, I do have a link to my coffee in the description and any little bit will help. I am not above begging at this point. But I'm almost down to the end there. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to cut this. And when I get down to that end, we're going to move over to the ironing board. Because, as with anything else, about three quarters of sewing is actually pressing. Who'd, who'd have thunk? And that little strip can go into the cabbage pile. All right, we've gotten to the ironing board. 
And this is one of those instances in which steam is your friend. And we're going to actually press this three times. The first time, we're just going to press the seam open so that it lays nice and flat. Just like you would like if you were pressing a shirt or anything else. Just make it lay flat. Uh, if you're using a tip that I learned, oh gosh, I don't even know, maybe 20 or more years ago. I don't even remember where I picked this up. But if you are reluctant to use steam, take a piece of your, just a small piece, of your cabbage and do a test on it and see if white vinegar will affect it. A white vinegar um, can leach dyes and do it cause damage to some fibers but if you can use it on your fabric instead of using steam what you can do to keep everything nice and crisp as you're pressing is to take like an eyedropper or a little paintbrush and just run a line of the white vinegar on the fabric right where it's going to be pressed and then fold it over. And what I'm doing with this second pressing is I'm folding the edge to meet the line of the stitches and pressing it. Um, but if you just use white vinegar along the line of where it's being pressed and then press using a slightly lower than normal temperature or standard temperature for synthetics and synthetics are ones that you really need to watch the vinegar use. It can have some nasty effects. Um, but it will put a fairly permanent press into the fabric without having to use steam. But again, you always want to test that on a piece of scrap fabric because you never know if it's going to leach the dyes out or if it's going to melt the fabric or what sort of effect it's going to have. Steam is hot, folks. It's at very edge, it doesn't need to be perfect because that's going to be part of the hem anyway. Okay, third pressing is you to roll that over so that you can see the stitches, which is why you want the pretty side of the stitches up, and then press it flat so that again the edges, both this edge and this edge, are rolled underneath and inside the roll of that fabric. And this is a much quicker press than that last one. As you can see, I've got this whole thing rolled up over on this side. That's because as you are doing the felling, it's really hard to get to the fabric or the seam in the fabric without rolling it or bunching your fabric in some way. Because this is a giant, giant piece of material. It's still going. It works best to roll it up instead of just kind of bunch it and hope for the best because that gets your hand full really quickly. So you just start at the widest point and kind of roll it into a sausage. And there is that little crisscross felling that I was talking about. 
but if you roll it into a little sausage, it's not quite as fat in your hands and you can hold it more easily, even down towards the bottom here where there is literally about four times as much fabric down here as there is on that other end. I switched over to the green monster covered petticoat because the B skirt at this point in time doesn't have any seams that need felling in the traditional sense. To do the regularly felled seams, you do the trimming and then the pressing so that it's all folded over and nice and neat and the raw edges are tucked inside, as you just saw in the video. And then you basically do a hemming stitch, but you just tack down the, uh, the seam on the inside instead of going down a hem. Now this is actually, I am working through the selvage edge, so it's a little bit stiffer, so it'll take me a little bit more effort to go through. But I'm just doing the, the invisible hem stitch here. It was actually more common to do the overcast whip stitch as the felling stitch. But I like this one better. It's more comfortable to me. So that's what I do. It's personal preference, really. But you're just tacking that down. I've done three stitches. This little black dot here is where I attached the thread at the beginning of the thread. So it's, I've gone over that twice. There is one stitch there and there's one stitch there. As you can see, they're really hard to pick out when done correctly. And you just do that all the way down the entire seam. And that's how you do a basic felling stitch. Uh, coming up momentarily, I'll show you how to do the crisscrossed, the more decorative felling, which is technically not considered a felling stitch. I'm working on the green monster petticoat. And since I'm not using any particular pattern, I'm just kind of winging it. This is the basic placket that's going to be in four general pieces. This one goes directly below the waistband and then there's going to be a longer layer to the knees underneath that and then ruffles underneath that and then ruffles underneath that. It's all going to be stitched together into one long piece but it'll poof out as it goes. Um, but because bodies are not straight up and down tubes, you have to add a few little curves in and this is just one of the places where I've taken in a dart so that it will curve around and curve to the shape of my body and I'm just tacking it down it's already the dart itself is actually stitched and I'm just tacking it down so I've attached my thread here and I'm going to do the same thing that I would do when felling a seam and just go right along the edge to make sure that it stays in place and I'm going to be doing that. I have four darts. And then because the front seam itself was actually on the selvage edge, both of these are selvage, I'm just going to tack those down instead of actually felling because the selvage edge should hold very well. Now that we've gone through the basics of felling, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just adding another thread. I'm almost done with this seam doing the cross hatched felling. Um, so I'm just go, going to go ahead and start another thread. I insert it back a short space so that the end of the thread is captured in the uh, felling folds. And as soon as that tail end disappears, I'll try not to stab myself in the finger and I'll just do 
two or three little whips around. I'm not catching the main fabric. It's just around the edge of the felling hem. It's not the prettiest thing, but it works well. And then I'll go ahead and insert and push that all the way through. Now to do the little hatches, they're just little cross stitches. They're shaped a little funky, so the cross isn't in the direct center, but they're basically just cross stitches. So, oh, that needs reposition just a touch. To do the stitch, it's still not quite right. There, that's better. Eh, close enough. To do the stitch, um, you kind of eye from where the last stitch ended down to the bottom, and then you go up a little bit, you insert the thread, and I am just doing right along exactly where the seam is so that the edge of the stitches on this side are lying directly on the seam. Let me move that so you can actually see. So the edges of these stitches are directly on that seam. And you insert the needle and then come up back towards you like so and pull through and it's going to cross over this edge and then to cross on the other side because everything is pressed neatly this is part of why everything gets pressed because it's pressed neatly you don't have to worry about continually folding and folding and, and fiddling with that end so to do the stitch on the other side you can kind of feel with your finger or thumb where the edge of the folded fabric is for most things of things like thick wools and such it's going to be a little bit more difficult um, but that's also part of why when you're felling seams instead of doing a full felling like this you can lay a um, a piece of tape fabric tape over and do the same thing but on the opposite side so that it stitches the tape in place over the two edges of the fabric which is something that I will show you in another video later on that is not something that I'm doing on any of my projects currently I am planning on actually doing a jacket to match this if I can find some nice corduroy that will go well with this. I'm thinking a corduroy jacket and then using the big chunk of cabbage that was left over from cutting the skirt to do either a full lining, which would be amazing and really warm, or to do at least collars, cuffs, and a partial lining uh, to be able to put in um, a couple of maybe inner pockets or something just for small items. And also, because I have a watch and chain, doing like maybe the watch pocket in this fabric, just a couple of little details. And then I'm thinking along the bottom hem of this, do a stiffening band of the um, corduroy as well, just so it stands out correctly. Anyway, those are plans for further things. I'm not there yet. Um, but you find the edge just with your fingers and then again going up from where that stitch ends you go forward a little bit so that you can come back this direction insert your needle through all of the layers and then back out again and it should be more or less directly above mine are always a little bit off but more or less directly above where that stitch came out and this is what it looks like on the back side. You can barely, barely see on the back side there where the needle came through. It's just barely picking through. And you can see that it's done that all along the seam. 
So that's perfectly fine. That's it's still going to hold it on there. It's still going to hold it fairly tight. I should have pulled these stitches tighter. Oh well. It's still enough. They're still tight enough that it's going to hold the ends, the edges of the fabric in there and keep them from unraveling, which is the whole point of felling. And then giant water fabric in my hands in my teeny tiny hands and then you go back and do the next stitch here and then find the edge of that again go through all the layers and up stitch through and just repeat that all the way down the seam. Then when you get to the end of the seam, you end up with this really nice, it's just a light decoration, but it's enough to add a little bit of interest to the entire thing. So, as usual, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to try some of these techniques. Um, even if it's just on little scraps of fabric, you know, six, seven inches long, a couple of things that you just have laying around, that it's just good to practice. I'd like to see what you're doing. Tag me on Instagram, let me know, or, or if you post pictures elsewhere, drop a link in the comments. You know, it's... I'm, I'm glad to hear from you guys, and I'm really glad some of you are starting to throw comments at me. That's great. I love interacting with you. Um, and that's why as soon as the new laptop comes in, I'm actually going to be starting a Twitch channel as well, just so I can sit and stitch and, like, talk to you guys, because that would just be amazing and mind-blowing. So that's, that's where things are going. Um, but yes, thank you so much. Share with me. Show me your projects. I want to see what you're doing. Let me encourage you.